Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What food do you swear people only pretend to like? As a Swede, Sir Stromig. As a human being, Sir Stromig. As a citizen of Earth, Sir Stromig. As a canned fish, Swedes. Swedes are fine in a stew or roast dinner. Edit, you mean the vegetable right. If I've learned anything in this thread, it's that I'm clearly uncultured. I've got no idea what 70% of these foods are. Judging by some quick googling, the answer is usually fish. Specifically weird fermented fish that only Scandinavians eat. Some of the jello salads out there. Green jello with carrots, and sometimes raisins, is an abomination. Also, whatever the hell my mom used to make with cottage cheese and orange jello. My family had this weird notion that if you put healthy stuff in jello that it was a side dish and not a dessert. Nope, you just ruined two foods by making unnatural combinations with them. Mom never did come across a jello recipe that she thought was a bad idea though. Edit, thanks for the awards. That was a pretty popular thing back in the day from what I've heard. It was useful for using up food that was about to spoil, they'd toss it in jello and call it a dish. Wild. Edit, I'm not sure why I'm getting all these up bodies but thank you all. Some people still do this. I grew up poor so maybe that's why it was a thing. I feel understood here. My grandma once made salmon jello as a refreshing summer dinner. Plain gelatin with chunks of salmon in it. However bad it sounds, it was worse. That's tinned cat food. Ever hear of hot lettuce? The shit smells like a tire fire. Edit, I am floored by the response to this comment. I had no idea this was so foreign to everyone else. Edit 2, I am disabling inbox replies. All three of the things people are asking forward slash saying have been asked forward slash said now 20 Kelvin times. Thanks for joining me on this weird journey of disgust. When I worked at a make your own pizza place we constantly had customers demand that we put lettuce on their pizza before it cooks. About 50% of the time they would then complain. God I hate customers. D colon lettuce on pizza. So, hot lettuce is a Pennsylvania Dutch thing. It was born of the depression. You take iceberg lettuce and smother it in this product called bacon gravy. But don't get excited. I know the word bacon is in it, but it tastes little like actual bacon and more like burning rubber. I believe most of them have horseradish in it as well. And that's it. You put it all in the oven until the lettuce is very sad. It stinks up your whole house something fierce. A lute fisk. I only know this from King of the Hill. It was the man with the terrible smell. King of the Hill. Where are you from? I am La Ocean. You are from the ocean. We eat this on Christmas on my dad's side of the family and everyone hates how it tastes, but it's an important part of our family history. His ancestors had to eat it to survive famine, and it's a way of keeping the memory of their sacrifices alive and showing respect to them. Having it with a table full of absolutely delightful cooking also serves as a reminder of what we do have, and makes us more aware of what we should be thankful for. We do drown it in mustard and cream sauce though. We eat this on Christmas on my dad's side of the family and everyone hates how it tastes, but it's an important part of our family history. His ancestors had to eat it to survive famine, and it's a way of keeping the memory of their sacrifices alive and showing respect to them. Having it with a table full of absolutely delightful cooking also serves as a reminder of what we do have, and makes us more aware of what we should be thankful for. We do drown it in mustard and cream sauce though. This is a pretty rad and meaningful tradition. Fondant. This. Plus, the basic rule is that fondant is used on cakes in lieu of tastier icings, like buttercream, because fondant's main purpose is the decoration. But any cake that's strong enough to hold all of your fondant decoration without falling apart is a cake that's not concerned about being delicious. Most major Le fondant decorated cakes that I've ever had are dry, dense, and lacking in flavor. As far as I'm concerned, if we're supposed to eat your cake, it needs to be delicious. I don't care if it looks like a rocket ship. Some of the tastiest cakes I've ever eaten were an aesthetic mess. Buttercream is the fucking best, and IMO looks much nicer than fondant, cake should look soft and creamy, not like it's covered in waxy play-doh. When Ace of Cakes was super popular on Food Network, all I could think about was how the cakes looked super cool, but must have tasted absolutely horrible. 
Imagine paying $1,200 for a neat looking cake that's five days old and covered in about a pound of flavorless nasty fondant. It's impossible for what they made on that show to be anything but stale and horrible tasting. This doesn't have enough up bodies. Fondant is nasty sugar clay that destroys the flavor of the cake. It has no flavoring to it. It's literally just sugar, water, gelatin, vegetable fat or shortening, and glycerol. Imagine taking a tilde tilde delicious, perfectly edible tilde tilde dry, crumbly nasty stale cake, then draping it in dry, leathery play duff. Then spend 18 hours sculpting details that the five-year-olds at the party will not look at before they smash it around and leave 75% of it on their plates. There, you have a fondant cake. Our forward slash photothate. This thread makes me feel 30% understood and 70% completely angry that people don't like avocado. To me, you have to properly season straight avocado, or eat it with something salty. That being said, I didn't even give it a shot until I went Kato, now guacamole is literally my jam. Does that mean you'd eat a peanut butter and avocado sandwich? To me avocado just has like almost no flavor. The way my husband explained it when getting me to try it the first time, it's more like a texture thing for some people. It added a nice little something something to a sandwich I prepared with it. I also very much like guacamole now. Avocado, to me, tastes like wet grass. Every time I've tried it I'm immediately reminded of when I would mow the lawn on a hot, humid day. It give this counts but vodka. Some people are like oh I love me a good glass of vodka fuck you, no you don't, this is blasphemy. I don't love vodka but I love what it do to me. Really finely distilled vodka kind of tastes like nail polish remover to me, but mixes nicely with juices and things. Recently though I tried a rougher vodka where the potato flavor really came through and I could actually find it palatable to sip on. If I was really determined to acquiring that taste I could probably drink it comfortably. As an experiment I mixed it with orange juice and it was disgusting. Potatoes and fruits don't mix. Juice vodka, which is a mix of vodka, typically non-potato flavor variety, with juice, typically orange but you can go with whatever, is very common around my parts. I very much like it depending on the orange juice used. People in the Borkas love to mix drinks. Some of most common examples. Jemit, Jamish tea, white wine with mineral water. Bambus, literally, bamboo, no fucky idea why, red wine and Coca-Cola. Juice vodka, explained. Diesel or meta white wine with Coca-Cola. Rum cola what it says on the tin, rum, dark variety, with Coca-Cola. Also similar to stock cola, where stock is a type of brandy mixed with cola. Oddly enough some of the drinks which are popular to mix, like gin tonic or variety of cocktails are very hard to come by and you'll usually not see that at parties or gatherings, in favor of wine and wine-based mixes outlined above. Oh yeah jelly deals. Um shit flavored fish wrapped in some nasty gelatinous slime. Eel tastes good when well prepared. My grandma would purchase me entire smoked eels from the market when I was a kid and she'd stew the ones I'd catch with my dad and uncles. It's too bad they're an endangered species now, because they're delicious. I'd definitely try jellied eels, too. I even have an eel tattooed on my right arm, lol. Yogi is fucking bomb. Eels up inside ya. Finding an entrance where they can. Anything I cook forward slash bake. Don't say that. I have the soap gene for cilantro, so I had my fiancé try a bit, raw, to tell me what it tasted like. Does it really just taste like grass for people without my curse? I do not have the curse. To me, it has a very fresh taste to it. It turns any meal into instant sunshine. This makes me so sad, as someone with the gene. I've heard people say it makes everything taste fresh and earthy flavors which I really enjoy. I hate that I don't get to experience that. At best, I have learned to tolerate it, for example. In guac. I have the soap gene for cilantro, so I had my fiancé try a bit, raw, to tell me what it tasted like. Does it really just taste like grass for people without my curse? No, cilantro does not taste like grass if you don't have the genes that make it taste soapy. Cilantro is parsley's sassier cousin. It's definitely its own flavor. Hard to describe because there really isn't anything else like it but it's delicious. I guess parsley would be close. Chitlins. Seriously, it's intestines sorta cleaned and cooked. That's it. 
my grandmother would make my granddad cook chitlins in the little shed forward slash outhouse where his tools were. No way was she allowing that smell inside. I'll never forget a Jeffrey Dahmer documentary I watched where they interviewed one of his neighbors. A black woman was talking about the terrible smell coming from his apartment while he was cooking human flesh, and she goes I just thought he was cooking chitlins or something. When food is prepared in a tool shed. Well, I'd say that's a really bad sign. I just can't eat something that's job is to make shit I'm sorry I just can't. No sausages. I'm a black dude with a family from rural South Carolina, near Manning. Chitlins were a thing but my mom refused to carry on the tradition and basically I only saw them at my grandmother's. I get that it's traditional and what slaves forward slash poor sharecroppers ate but I think it's one of the pieces of soul food that we can just get rid of. They're straight up disgusting and unhealthy. Edit, to all my 843 family and folks, I've heard of the chitli strut and have never forward slash will never attend. I was at the grocery store with my friend and there were guys in front of us in line with two giant tubs of stuff, and we asked them if they were having a party, because we thought it was two giant tubs of ice cream. It was not. Kinda glad we skipped the party they invited us to.